Ventricular assist devices are used to help patients on a heart transplant waitlist to survive as they wait for a donor heart to become available. We are State of the Heart. We are working to create an innovation for wireless ventricular assist devices. We are working with mentors and experts in the biomedical field to improve the quality of life for patients in the heart transplant list. Follow this new journey as we improve the state of the heart. I'm Eliza and I'm the research lead. I'm Eliza and I'm the product designer. I'm Kane. And I'm the documentation lead. And my name is Axel. And I'm the outreach lead. And, and we, we are the State, State of the Heart. Heart. Let's talk about the problem that State of the Heart aims to solve. For many patients with end-stage heart failure, getting a heart transplant is the best way to restore heart function. But with a shortage of donor hearts available, many patients end up on the heart transplant wait list for years, and some even die while waiting for a heart to become available. Ventricular assist devices, or VADs, are devices implanted in the patient's body to assist the heart and prolong a patient's life as they wait for a transplant. VADs are powered with a drive line that runs inside of the body to charge the device. Unfortunately, these drive lines create many infection concerns and negatively impact a patient's quality of life. State of the Heart is working to solve this complex web of problems by making wireless VADs a possibility, eliminating the need for a drive line and drastically improving a patient's quality of life. Why do you think it is important to continue developing heart solutions and technologies? Because a heart is vital, right? I mean, I saw when we went through our experience, many kids that go into the cardiac unit in the children's hospital don't come out of it. Most of them don't. We were one of them. A few minor changes. Um, the blade uh, overall curvature um, without any motion is a little bit less uh, aggressive and uh, also so we're going to basically sort of make this uh, similar to a helicopter swatch plate. Our original idea was to develop a cheaper and non-invasive solution for coronary artery disease by using a detergent to dissolve the plaque in the arteries. However, this turned out to be illogical because it is too hard to block out the detergent from spreading out into the bloodstream and into vital organs. Therefore, we decided to change ideas and work on the newest generation of wireless ventricular assist devices instead for people that need heart transplants and aren't currently able to get one. This technology helps blood flow in the arteries. We will innovate upon this technology by creating a sort of fail-safe in case of battery failure in this new generation of wireless VADs. We will implement variable pitch, which is when the blades rotate around their long axis to change the blade pitch, resulting in a better angle of attack. We designed our product in CAD. As you can see here, our blades are able to move freely up and down. The blades will utilize the cylinder to tilt the angle of attack. You can imagine a pencil going through the cylinder and tilting up and down to tilt the angle of the blades. We took a public poll to see what the public thought about using quality of life in your medical design. Since we're designing a medical device, we want to make sure we're always considering the patients as the end consumer of our project. One of the poll respondents said that there's a difference between living and surviving. One shouldn't sacrifice quality of life just to rush a product and make money. And that's what we at State of the Heart are really considering, is that ethical implications of our device. transition to a circle, you know, a, a, a cylinder going along the axis of the blade, a round circle, and then instead of that bushing that's going with a pin through it, that bushing would be a separate part. And so your blade would go through that bushing. Okay. So basically you drill a hole like you were going from blade to blade through those center bushings. And also the jaws of the instruments here get really, really hot. And so the surgeon has to wait a long time for them to cool down before they can do the next seal and cut. And so it's a very inefficient, slow procedure. So we can do things potentially.
when they did the echogram, uh, they determined that my aorta valve leakage was at the severe stage and that if I did not get it repaired, it was going to result in heart failure. And heart failure equals death. So, but like I had no symptoms and they're now they're telling me I need open heart surgery. So that was the, uh, that was the hard part. Current gen ventricular assist devices improves arterial blood flow, but as described in part one of our documentary, have serious issues that may happen because it is operated with a driveline wire that connects the insides of the body to the outside world. This vastly increases risk of infection and negatively impacts quality of life. We found that while ventricular assist devices are effective in prolonging patients' lives, they seriously disrupt patients' quality of life. The company Second Heart eliminates this problem by creating a wireless ventricular assist device. However, this leads to the problem of an unreliable battery, or state of the heart comes in by innovating the device Second Heart is currently working on. Our innovation will allow users to do more strenuous tasks and act as a fail-safe in case of battery failure. As you can see here, the wireless VAT is located in an expandable nitinol cage to protect the artery that it's located in. There are spinning blades twirling in this direction. Um, similar to a fan, it's creating blood flow instead of airflow inside of this artery. This VAD is charged wirelessly to an external battery pack, but there's also a small backup battery inside the stent in case connection to the external battery pack is lost. However, this battery only lasts about 15 minutes and does not leave the patient with much time to get help if a connection is lost. State of the Heart is currently in development for an innovation of next-gen VADs. We currently have a 3D CAD model and a 3D printed prototype. Our innovation is adding a variable pitch mechanic to the device as described in our documentary part 1. This prototype is just the blade of our device, but it allows you to visualize how we implemented variable pitch in our device, which is through the eccentric hinge and that allows a blade to tilt angle of attack. There are two main ways that we can use variable pitch technology to improve this wireless vat. The first, smaller scale way, involves um, creating a failsafe using the variable pitch technology. If the patient lost connection to their wireless power or something happened, the uh, variable pitch design would kick in and the blades would lessen their angle, which would create less load on the battery. Alternatively, if you wanted to do a strenuous activity such as climbing upstairs, then the device will change to a steeper angle of attack, which will increase the blood flow even more. During P3, I've created many testing environments for our product. This is done online using Autodesk CFD or Computational Fluid Dynamics 2020. The reason I'm doing this online instead of physical is because of physics limitations and budget. Most of our products were using 3D printed products and that created many physics limitations for accuracy, especially because we were using 10 times scale. The first step of the design process is to define the problem. This took a long time for State of the Heart at the beginning of our process to define which problem we wanted to solve. We knew we wanted to do something with heart disease, but we didn't know if we would be targeting coronary artery disease or a different type. So we went through a lot of research to eventually come to ventricular assist devices. Through generating concepts, we came up with many ideas to this problem. Many were disproven, however, using mentors and research. The idea we decided to go with was the second heart ventricular assist device. This was solidified and finalized with mentors, engineers, and patients. The next step is to develop a solution. After consulting our mentors for advice, we were able to discover a new path we could take for our products. Our mentors introduced us to ventricular assist devices, which we believe to be the defining moment of our products, because our final product ended up being an innovation on ventricular assist devices. 
Our innovation on ventricular assist devices is the implementation of variable pitch. We had one main goal for our implementation that affected two different variables. Our main goal was to have a 15% change of load on the rotational motor based only on blade angle. I started by researching in the field of fluid dynamics. We initially wanted to create a physical rig, but with budget limitations and issues with consistency, we decided to use virtual programs. I consulted many people in the field, ranging from engineers that do water damage to F1 engineers. I decided to go with Autodesk CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, which specializes in rotating pump assemblies, especially non-compressible fluids. I started by creating a single blade in CFD, and testing different angles without any movement. But this seemed less applicable to the environment it was in during actual use. I decided to go with the extra step and create an environment with the rotating pump. This took much more time, but was much more realistic and more direct to our prototype goals. After testing, our results were transferred to a percent difference and we exceeded our goal by 5% with a total flow difference of 20% by just changing the blade angle. This is a 15 time scale 3D printed model of our prototype. As you can see, this is our implementation of variable pitch. Evaluating the solution. If we were to market this product, we will have the data points that we need to make sure that our product is viable and sustainable because we want to make sure that we save the most life possible and that stay the hard as our main goal. Our next step is to present our solution and we will do this at the Singer Expo. We'll see you there in April. Get excited! Hey Elisha, what has been the hardest thing for you in this project? The hardest part of this project for me was Autodesk CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics. This was a testing resource and application by Autodesk to test fluid dynamics for pumps like the ventricular assist device for state of the heart. We've been able to test and research our idea and innovation many times using this application without having to build much things. Kane, how has our mentor helped us throughout this project? Uh, our mentor, he has helped us a lot throughout the, the product. He's helped us get a lot of insights for our ideas and stuff like that. And he's also helped us get connections to many companies such as Second Heart. He's also coming to the in-house expo. So we are really excited for that and I hope you are too. Alright everyone, I want you to channel your inner flamingo. Let's lift those feet up into the air. Hands together. And more. <laughs> and actually up. Eliza, is this a good time? Oh uh, yes, of course. What are you excited about in the next couple months? Oh uh, well we are really excited here at State of the Heart for our final expo so we can present our project to you. <laughs> hey Elisha! I love you. Hey guys, it's been an awesome day today. I felt oh, great today. It was like the best day of my life today because we had like the first one come and like, you know, I really like to like inspire them and you know, dream big like everyone here does. I expect it to be pretty similar to our um, freshman in-house expo, but this time we're gonna have a little bit more, well, we have an added element that we did not have at our last expo. Shark Tank? was a great opportunity for our group to get funding and to practice pitching our project to other people. We actually ended up winning Shark Tank, so that means our group gets the highest priority for funding in case the school ever gets their hands on some money or equipment. However, since there's only a slim chance we may get any money at all, our plan for the Senior Expo is to simply make do with our 3D printed prototype.